This episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast is brought to you by Sari Clementine Clothing, located at 366 South 500 East, number 104, in beautiful downtown Salt Lake City. Hey, what's up, Salt Lake City? Thank you so much for joining me this evening on the I Am Salt Lake podcast, episode 27. I am your host, Chris Hollifield. I am your guide from episode to episode as I guide you on a journey through beautiful Salt Lake City, introducing you to professionals, musicians, individuals, just everyday people doing really awesome stuff here in uh, in the city, making it uh, making it what it is today. So thank you very much for downloading us or streaming us online, however you're listening to us right now. If you're not familiar with our website, IamSaltLake.com, that's going to connect you with all the previous episodes where you can download them, you can listen to them directly on the website, you can connect with us on iTunes or Stitcher Radio, you can leave us a review on iTunes as well, which means a lot to me. And that really helps out with the show ratings, and it gets us in front of more people and exposes us and uh, gets this podcast listened to by the millions and millions of people that uh, enjoy listening to us. So seriously, thank you so much, uh, so much for listening to us. This episode was a really awesome episode. I had the opportunity to sit down with Jason Stock. He is the head brewmaster at Squatters Pub Brewery. They're located downtown at 147 West Broadway. And seriously, I don't know about you, but when I think of beer in Utah, I think of Squatters Microbers. I think of their delicious beers, their Provo Girl, their uh, Hops Hops Rising, all, all their, I mean, all their delicious beers. They have so many delicious beers. And uh, I mean, seriously, you would not think Utah would have such delicious locally microbrewed beer. But I mean, we do. And this episode, I had that opportunity to sit down, like I said, with Jason Stock. He is the head head brewmaster, the the mastermind behind creating a lot of these uh, delicious beers that we, we drink on the weekends as we're uh, relaxing from our uh, long work week. So I learned a lot, found out kind of how he got hooked up with squatters, and uh, a lot of a lot of fun stuff in between. So seriously, join us, uh, join me on the conversation as I had with Jason Stock over at uh, Squatters Pub Brewery. Why don't you go ahead, kind of tell us about how you kind of got hooked up with squatters, how your career with squatters began, a little bit of history. <laughs> Well, um, honestly, my career with squatters was uh, in large part luck. <laughs> I, uh, my brother and I homebrewed for about um, maybe six years while I was going to college. I just loved the hobby. We were just gung-ho, homebrewing. We had a definite schedule. You know, every, every weekend we were uh, brewing a batch and bottling a batch and just loved it. And I uh, found myself in a position where I kind of needed a, a part-time job. And we happened to be at the Beer Nut uh, and uh, looked at their little post-it board they had back in the day. And there was a 3 by 5 card, actually, back then, handwritten. And, and when was this? How long ago probably was oh, this? Oh, man. Uh, 99. Okay. Two, 99, 2000, somewhere okay. around there. Must have been, it would it would have been 2000 because I got hired pretty fast. Um, little 3 by, three by 5 handwritten card, which is not squatter style anymore. But uh, back then it was, uh, you know, looking for a part-time brewer. You know, called Jenny Talley, which is my former boss, and uh, called her, set up an interview. Uh, took a six-pack of homebrew in as my resume, which is the first time I've ever had a job interview where I took beer in with me. <laughs> But that was my resume. She tasted my beers. Uh, we talked, and the next thing I knew, I was the assistant brewer at Squatters. Uh, started in uh, June of uh, 2000. So you've been per- with Squatters then since June of 2000, and yeah, now it's uh, basically there was a brief period from uh, 2001 to about t- 2003 where my dad and I started a restaurant together. Okay. I always kind of kept my foot in the door at Squatters, like when she went on vacation or you know, needed a day off or whatever, I'd come in and fill in because I already had the experience on our system. 
when our restaurant didn't do so well, then I ended up coming back to Squatters full time. So I was uh, technically away from 2001 to mid 2002, and then been full time ever since. And so, when did you become the head brewmaster? Then that is your title, correct? At at Squatters Inn, or correct? Yeah, I'm the brewmaster at the uh, at the pub downtown. That actually was about a year ago. Okay. To to date, um, I was the assistant brewer was the technical title for about maybe the first five years and then the head brewer for the last maybe five years and the last year uh jenny tally uh my former boss she moved on to bigger and better things i guess and then so moved into the brewmaster position and now i have an assistant uh, a guy named uh, connor papineau is my assistant we've been killing it since uh he started in uh, january last year so and what exactly is the job of a head brewmaster? What what is your day consist of? <laughs> Ironically, you do a lot less brewing. <laughs> my my job is uh, for the last year is a lot more um, planning, scheduling, uh, recipe design, and the way our pub is set up. I'm in uh, meetings just for the business in general. A lot of my time is spent in those, just you know, talking about the direction our pub is going to take, the company is going to take in general. To be perfectly fair, Connor does you know the lion's share of the actual hands-on brewing now. I mean, we we do definitely split that duty, but that's kind of the irony of getting that title of brewmasters. You suddenly find yourself in front of a computer <laughs> or in meetings a lot of the time. But it's also really cool because I get to decide, you know, what are we going to brew this month? What are we going to brew this week? What are we going to do for a special holiday beer, you know? Those. So you could actually decide some of these new flavors that we, oh, or, yeah. you know, or yeah, whatnot. Definitely. That how, how, many, how many different squatters beers are there? I mean, there's... I mean, it's off awesome. the top of your head, I mean, I guess I guess that's hard because they're, they're, they're coming and going. Like you said, there's winter yeah, time. Yeah, especially at the pub level. Um, you know, we're we're different from the uh, Utah Brewers Cooperative where they brew the beers that people would probably normally see at the liquor store, or grocery store, or whatever, like Full Suspension, Plug Me Porter, uh, Chasing Tell. You know, those are... So when you're the the beers that you're brewing them, where are they going? Just there at the uh, local primarily at, at the, the restaurant. Pub. Yeah, we okay. also have what's called a uh, packaging agency license, and so we're doing a lot of uh, small batch brews. Uh, we brew on a on a ten barrel system. We put out when we do a small batch series, it's about give or take about a thousand bottles, and they tend to go really fast. And uh, we do have certain ones that are kind of. Uh, become traditional to come out at certain times of the year but we also have a lot of room to play uh we we also brew the flagship brews too though you know we we brew full suspension we brew chasing tell we brew emigration amber we do uh beers that you would maybe normally see from squatters as well but a lot of the brewing we do which is why i love where i'm at is we get to play a lot and do brew master specials come up with new recipes at any given time, we have three taps, uh, our Nitro special tap, and then two Brewmaster special taps, where we can kind of play with what we want to do. It's uh, super casual, super organic, um, and, you know, basically me and Connor sit down and say, what do you want to be drinking in a month? You know, what kind of beer do you want to have when the weather's like this or when this is happening? And then that's how we kind of decide, oh, well, let's come up with a recipe for this type of beer, you know, and hopefully we're kind of fitting the needs of what people want to be drinking that come into our pub. And, you know, we're also balancing that with expectations of of, uh, of beers that people have just come to expect from us. Um, big one is our espresso stout, for example. If I don't brew that every three months, I'll hear about it. <laughs> so, What's your favorite style of beer? Um, right now, um, just loving Scottish ales. We have one that we've developed about six months ago called the uh, Wee Peat Scottish Ale which is a 4% Scottish ale using a little bit of a peated malt. And really that was uh, developed last spring and we were just kind of smelling, you know, when the when everything just starts thawing and starts kind of coming back again. And it's that kind of earthy rejuvenation kind of smell. And, and we got talking about it and we started brewing a Scottish ale. Uh, we were super happy with our <clears throat> with the results of that and we've just been kind of trying to perfect that beer um 
we have a beer in the fermenter right now, which is a, a Scotch ale, um, a cousin of Scottish ales, but this one's about 8% alcohol. Still earthy, malty beer, but we also uh, spiced it with coriander. And we should be bottling that here in the next couple of weeks and hopefully have it out at the beginning of next year. And that'll be only available in bottles because of the U- Utah liquor laws, you know, obviously. <laughs> yeah, actually, let's let's touch a little bit on the Utah liquor laws, uh, the, probably your favorite subject uh, to talk about. Well, there's a, there's a few areas that I find interesting. First of all, and, you know, people have explained to me, you know, you could look at a bottle of squatters and it'll say, eight percent nine percent alcohol and then you get a, a commercial can or something it'll say 3.2 percent what it, it, explain that to me i mean what how does that work that you, you could brew does, does it technically have more alcohol in it then oh yeah yeah if our beer says eight percent or six percent mm. you are getting a beer with with that percent alcohol in it i think the i think the real uh, confusion comes in uh, Utah used to require that beers were measured by alcohol by weight. So you had an ABW versus an ABV, which is alcohol by volume. Pretty much everywhere in the world measures alcohol by volume. It was like uh, Utah and I believe Oklahoma were the two kind of holdouts for alcohol by weight. So it's two ways of saying the same thing. So a, a beer that is 3.2 by weight is exactly the same th- uh, thing as a beer that's 4% by volume. And I, uh, my dates are hazy, but probably between 8 and 10 years ago, pretty much every brewery in Utah changed their labeling to say uh, alcohol, alcohol by volume. So if you see a 3.2 beer, they're probably measuring by weight. And then beyond that, it is just a matter of how strong that beer is. So um, I'm drinking a uh, Winterfest from Wasatch right now, 7.1 by volume. If that was measured by weight, this is a rough estimate, probably would read 6.3 by weight, but it'd be the exact same beer. Interesting, yeah, because that's always confused me a little bit, you know. Yeah, it's like it, I can go to Smith's and it's like I can get a Squatters or, you know, or a Wasatch or something like that, and it would be, you know, to me it looks at high At Smith's it would be 4%. Oh, 4%. Yeah, only. Um, and that's just Utah liquor laws. So if you want our higher alcohol beers, they have to be purchased at the uh, state liquor stores or the beer store at uh, roughly 17 South and 3rd West. Squatters Pub has a packaging agency in the the very front of the pub. You can come in and buy high alcohol beer to go at the same price you would pay at the liquor store. Uh, The biggest difference is you know that beer was treated right the whole way. When When it goes to the state, it may sit in a warehouse unrefrigerated and then obviously when you buy it from the state liquor stores it's unrefrigerated just sitting out on their counters our beer when you buy it from us the high alcohol beer doesn't matter which one has been taken care of the whole way through so you're getting it in the best condition it can be sold at especially if you buy it directly from the pub or from the the beer store excellent so i mean squatters beers i mean you can get those out of utah too right i mean yeah. they're they're sold united states wide or where? um uh it's not really my expertise my understanding yeah. is we're distributing in about 15 states now 15 states so definitely I mean, how long growing. has squatters even been around or do you even know Squatters uh, started in uh, September of 89, I believe. Interesting. So it's probably, I mean, so about 20. Even years. with Utah, I mean, I've seen a lot of Utah laws change. I mean, there's probably been a huge progression. I mean, what, I mean, pretty, I, I, for probably just the, the alcohol content is probably one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, of that's in definitely Utah. been the biggest change. We, when I started there, we, um, Really, all all I brewed when I started was 4% beers yeah. because we served everything we made was served on draft at the pub. <clears throat> they changed the law so that we could brew a high alcohol beer. It had to be bottled, and then um, we used to have to sell it to the state and then buy it back, and then we could sell it. And now it's progressed to the point where we can brew it, uh, bottle it, and then sell it directly out of our packaging agency. Um, do, do any squatters, uh, do, do any of them come in cans or no? I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen a squatter. Uh, currently, no. We used to have Chasing Tail in cans. Well, beer just tastes better in the pot. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, cans are convenient if you're camping or yeah. hiking or whatever. But uh, um, I've heard 
I've heard some rumor that there there's some talk of doing a little bit more in the cans. So, when people find out that you brew beer in Salt Lake City, I mean, what what is probably the biggest question that people, you know, the, people find out? Oh, I'm you know, you're the head brewmaster of, of of a pub in Salt Lake City. People outside of Utah, I mean, it, they probably are like. Wow, there's actually beer in Utah. I mean, <laughs> people don't even realize out, outside of Utah probably how, how big of a of a craft beer scene there is. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I think you kind of touched on. It. I think the the biggest misconception is that you can even brew beer in Salt Lake City. I'm in a pretty fortunate position to be working downtown. We, um, in our pub, a lot of our clientele is people from out of town here for a convention, here for business, mm. you know, whatever. And um, it's been pretty gratifying to be honest you know people come through try our beer and they're like you know wow i didn't even think i would be able to get a beer in salt lake city let alone um, a much delicious less beer. <laughs> i love this beer like yeah. great job you guys are doing awesome that's always been really great to hear I, th- I think the yeah i think the most common misconception is that we're a dry state or a dry city and people come to salt lake city i think they visit us red rock uh, desert edge you know anywhere downtown that you know is mostly what I'm familiar with. They're always pleasantly surprised. We have a a really vibrant beer scene, especially for a city our size and a city with the at least with the perception of the you know Mormon dominance or whatever. What what do you, I mean? What do you think overall of, of of the beer scene? I mean, to me, it's pretty it's pretty incredible. I mean, granted, I'm not familiar with other states or other cities, yeah. but. Is there is is this pretty common in most big cities as far as as far as the local microbreweries or <laughs> well I I can't talk about that without coming off as arrogant <laughs> yeah no I mean and 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 and, and absolutely please uh, I get do. homesick I mean, for our beer I, yeah I think I think uh, Utah beer is on par with anywhere I've yeah. been and I mean that you know uh, went to San Diego a couple of years ago and they have a they have a really great beer scene in San Diego but everyone's just uh, IPA hop driven which is fine you know yeah. knock yourselves out what I like about Salt Lake and, and our beer scene is you have you know you went to putting out like just amazing beers across the board Red Rock doing a great job across the board I went in there at Oktoberfest <clears throat> just blown away I mean they had I, I want to say like six different amazing German style beers on at Oktoberfest I think um, us at Squatters are doing a great job of just having a, a great diversity of beer. You know, we're not just like ramming hops down everyone's throats. <clears throat> and I guess that's what I found in my limited travels <laughs> is when I go to other cities, it's just all about clubbing people over the head with hops and just being the hoppiest or the highest alcohol or whatever. <clears throat> and obviously, you know, we have plenty of high alcohol beers here in Salt Lake City. We have, you know, uh, Squatters IPA is 6.5%, Hop Rising is, uh, I believe, 9%. We have uh, now Actually, let's start. Now, now hops, hops Rising, <laughs> that you're, you, that's you on the cover I, of it, right? I'm Correct? the guy on the label. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I, 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 I realized that when I was going to, I was like, that, you know, because that's, that's actually one of my favorite, favorite ones, just I, I love the hoppiness <laughs> in it. The irony is I've never brewed that beer. <laughs> really? Yeah. How, how did you get hooked up with the on the cover of that? I mean, tell me what. Well, uh, I'll go ahead and piss off the people I work for. Um, for years, I had this ugly beard, yeah. and uh, they used to kind of give me shit for it. While you know, when I was working, like, oh, you need to trim that up, you need to do this yeah, and yeah. this. We want you to look a little more professional. And I just always kind of, yeah, whatever. And, and then uh, at some point, our marketing director came to me, and she was like, you know, we're thinking of this concept for a beer label, and we, you know, we want this farmer on the label with the big beard. And would you mind? posing for a picture for that label and I you know obviously was just like yeah it's no problem of course I would and so they uh dressed me up in the coveralls and the cowboy hat with the pitchfork uh took some pictures in front of a blue screen and then I think it was a week or two later came to me with like a prototype of the six pack I'm like oh here's what it's going to look like and they had added the sunset or sunrise or whatever's behind me and uh and the hop on the on the pitchfork and uh yeah, next thing I knew, it was kind of a so big that deal. that's not your normal work attire. You don't normally go to work dressed in the overalls <laughs> no, and, no, and not and, at all. And, and, I barely <laughs> fit in them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that no, because that that's awesome. I mean, that that has always been one of my favorite um, favorite beers to to drink. I mean, do you ever find yourself drinking like a commercial beer and being like, well, maybe 
maybe I and kind of it just it's uh, it's hard after you drink a delicious delicious uh, locally brewed beer. I mean, to, yeah, that can be the case. I mean, um, as bad as it is to, to say as a brewer, but I'm an honest guy. So yeah, um, no, that's what, there are times for a Miller High Life or a PBR. You know, yeah. Like if I'm going to drink a ton of beer in a night. I, my, I would definitely choose that over uh, Winterfest or, or uh, the Hop Rising <clears throat> because I can't drink eight Hop Risings without falling on the floor. <laughs> yeah. But I could be at a party and have eight Millers and be just fine. Or in the middle of July, sucking down a Winterfest, you know. But tonight, it's great. But yeah, there, there are times that you drink. Just because it's like, like just a thicker sucks. beer or something like that, a little yeah. darker. Yeah, the, maybe the high alcohol. The bigger flavor, those are all great things. I mean, I I would, uh, if I'm going to pair beer with food, I definitely would pick one of our beers or or craft beer for sure. I mean, what are you going to pair, you know, PBR with, realistically? You know? A burger. 7-Eleven nachos. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a nice yeah, barbecue hamburger, yeah, yeah. hot dogs, I In guess. In July, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm definitely not a beer snob. I mean, I, I love good beer, but I'll, I'll drink the shit beer as well. You can ask any of my friends that they'll attest to that. So, I mean, you're a pretty big beer drinker then. Do you, do you get into wines or any other kind of liquors? Or are you pretty much just... Yeah, I, I love wine. Uh, wine doesn't love me, so um, I, I drink wine pretty sparingly just because the the hangover tends to be pretty gnarly for me. To be honest, I drink a lot of Canadian whiskey, just like super smooth. If I'm, if I'm at a party, and you know, just drinking, drinking. Yeah, give me some Canadian host and Coke. <laughs> So did you grow up here in Salt Lake then? I mean, are you from, is that, is this your hometown more or less, or where did you grow up even? Yeah, this is my hometown for sure. Uh, technically born in uh, Fairfield, California, but my dad was an Air Force guy. We moved here when I was uh, about three, and so, yeah, this is definitely my hometown. I, uh, you know, at the, lived two years in Indiana. That's code for I went on a mission for the LDS Church, <laughs> but I, I think outside I think of that, I've uh, lived in Salt Lake my whole life. So, brewing beer. I mean, what what's the ult- your ultimate favorite thing probably about brewing beer? Favorite thing about brewing beer? Well, I I, I realized um, about the time I was ready to graduate from college, actually, that I, for me personally, I like uh, making something yeah. something tangible. Um, had enough jobs working in office environments where there was, at the end of the day, no matter how many phone calls I took or whatever, I, I, I couldn't like see what I did or, yeah. or there wasn't like feedback. Um, I love cooking for friends, um, and I think it's like right along that lines of like, I love making good beer. And in our brewery, we have a glass wall that separates the brewery. F- from the brew pub to me there's something really gratifying about looking out and seeing people enjoying your product and knowing like i made that i made that beer that that guy's holding his hand that he just looked at his friend and gave it you know like held it up he gave that kind of nod of approval like oh my god this is fucking good beer you know yeah um whatever it is about that like i thrive on that i i like I like that kind of feedback. I love brewing at the pub level because we have a lot of freedom, and we can we can play with things. We can come out with a just totally different beer every month. We're not, you know, I, I've toured uh, big macro brew places like Budweiser, for example, and I absolutely respect what they do. I mean, it's amazing the scale of things they do and the the preciseness of it, just mind boggling. But at the same token, I'm glad I don't have to come in every day and brew the exact same beer day in, day out. You know, I love the fact that I can go in tomorrow and be like, what are we going to brew on Wednesday? Within reason. And we, we do definitely have a schedule. And we have things we need to do. But we have, we have a lot of freedom to just play. And I think I you know alluded to it earlier, like, what do you want to be drinking in a month? And that's just me and my assistant talking or me and the people at the pub. Like, what are you going to, what are you going to want to have in May? Yeah. You know, and I, I like that freedom and I, I like making people happy, I guess. <laughs> Who comes up with the names? I mean, some of them have some really interesting names, especially, I think almost even sometimes a little bit on a uh, inside Utah joke <laughs> to a degree. Yeah. A lot of them are that way. Um, yeah, the names, that's uh, a good question. It, it's uh, almost always a super organic um, 
everyone at the pub kind of gets in on it um, from you know the owners down to the servers or busboy and we'll kind of open it up and say hey we're making this beer it's going to be like this and this and this um, it's going to come out this time of year we're open to names and the, and the joke is we have what we call the trust tree and then people can just kind of throw any name out there but what's cool about that is like one person's kind of stupid idea that comes into the trust tree, which I shouldn't call it stupid if it's in the trust tree, but, you know, might inspire somebody else to come up with a different idea. And then it it really just seems like at some point we kind of go, yeah, okay, cool, that's what we're going to call it. And then it comes down to once we decide what we want to call it, we have to submit that to the to the state and the federal government to get approval. And I think as long as it's not, like, too demeaning or derogatory to anybody there, pretty cool about approving things and and we definitely don't set out to like push buttons um i don't think that's ever been no no the case no. They're, uh, just, they're just kind of funny but little but there is maybe. something about being a brew pub in utah where of course you're gonna latch onto your to your you know local quirks or whatever because yeah, so. it provo girl that's, that's provo girl yeah you know, i designed a beer called uh it ended up being called outer darkness huh. and that was uh, a dream of mine actually from when I started brewing is to brew a Russian Imperial Stout the biggest, darkest, heaviest beer you can brew and to call it Outer Darkness which was kind of a reference to the Mormon version of Hell which yeah. is called Outer Darkness and then I actually painted the, uh, the eyes on the label there's the fiery devil eyes on a black background and stuff so that's definitely part of it to, to tie in not necessarily Mormonism but our, you know the local, local aspects, yeah. yeah. Um, it's always tongue in cheek and pretty good natured, though. <laughs> but yeah, super, super organic, and really, our beer names, especially at the pub level, could come from anyone from a dishwasher to an owner. Well, shoot, I want to get a yeah. job there just like so a name of beer, you know. <laughs> well, I'll keep you in the loop, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you could, if you could pick anybody, past or present, dead or alive, to have a beer with, sit down and have a beer with, and, and pick. I mean. Who, who 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 would that be? Who would who would you enjoy to have a beer with? Man, you're gonna have to cut out some dead air here. <laughs> no, that's you know that's fine. I mean, first person that comes to your mind, I guess, or anybody you've looked up to. Or... You know, I've got like band people I'm thinking of, but then that, that I just all I would say is thank you for the music and stuff. Uh... That's fine. I mean, if, you know, I, I just thought, you know. No, no, no. Are, are you in a band? I mean, do you, do you play in it? No, nope, it's just in? air guitar. Oh, okay, or just air guitar. Yeah. Just love a lot of local music. Um, yeah, uh, at some point during this interview, I'll just pop in with the uh, who I'd have a beer with. It's it's. Up no, first. that's fine. Well, I mean, we're, we're going to kind of kind of wrap it up here in anyways. But uh, what, besides brewing beer, I mean, what are some other hobbies and interests? I mean, what, what, are, what are some other things about Jason? Yeah. Uh, I love uh, I love cooking, um, cook all the time. Love to paint and draw. Friends and I just play darts a lot. <laughs> Pretty casual dude. I, I love our local music scene a lot. As, as often as I can, I get out and you know, see the bands that I like. Primarily uh, heavy metal bands, but I hate to pigeonhole myself. I, I like all kinds of music, but metal's got my heart <laughs> you got any favorite bars around town that you that you like or? oh favorite bars i love uh cheers to you is probably where i feel most at home which if they hear that they'll laugh because what i drink there usually is coors light and, and a whiskey <laughs> diet so <laughs> i like wife's place a lot uh found myself at twilight quite a bit lately so and that, that's a great place I yeah it's a yeah, nice little hole in the wall you know haven't sure. been updated since what, i feel a little old there lately but <laughs> <laughs> which is ironic a free jukebox you know yeah. i mean you can't beat it yeah and it's walking distance from my house so <laughs> that's great yeah well i mean that's that's pretty much it i mean i think i found out you know about you as a as a brewmaster and and uh, i mean what actually one thing i don't know if i asked you what what's the what do you think the top selling beer is at squatters well, any idea uh, what, any idea I what know what is? our top selling beer is at the pub. At the um, pub what, what is the top selling beer at the pub? Top selling at the pub is Hefeweizen, actually. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And our top selling bottled beer is uh, going to make me sound cocky again, but it's Hop Rising. But, I, you know, I think it's just the label. I'm not sure about the beer, but the guy on the label is <laughs> sexy. Every, everybody just wants, well, who's that guy with a good looking beard? Well, you, you definitely got a yeah. good beard. I mean, uh, yeah. it and, uh, and it is a great beer. I mean, no, I, I don't it brew is. it. But uh, I, I do enjoy that beer, and uh, 
it's wild. I, I mean, I got recognized in San Diego by guys from Minnesota. From that label? From that label, yeah. Oh, hey, are you the guy on the Hot Rising label? And I was like, wow. You know, around town happens fairly often. You yeah. know, be at the grocery store or wherever, somebody will come up and say, hey, are you the guy on the Hot Rising label? But being on vacation in San Diego at a random neighborhood bar there and having two guys come up from Minnesota and recognize me, it was kind of weird. <laughs> so. And did they have you autograph their bottle? Or they did. Yeah. Did they really? That happens too. I never know what to write. So if anyone has suggestions, you know, let me know. <laughs> cheers to you or something? I think so, I usually write cheers. <laughs> cheers. What, what advice would you give, let's give somebody who wants to start doing a little home brewing? I mean, uh, well, to start home brewing, yeah, like uh, let's just say, do it. Just yeah. say I want. If you to want to get into professional brewing, definitely start home brewing. Yeah. First, first thing I tell anyone that comes in asking for a job at Squatters is first, first question I ask is, "Do you home brew?" And if they say no, I say, "Go do that for a year or two, and then come talk to us." If they are home brewing, then we, you know, we'll kind of take a look at them. And, but if you, if you're not showing the ambition to to brew on your own. I'd say, by and large, don't bother knocking on brewery doors thinking you want to be a brewer. Is that pretty much a requirement, then, if you want to get a job? At a yeah, in, in a weird way. You know, a lot of people think that it requires schooling or whatever, um, and it, and it, schooling doesn't hurt. A lot of the brewers I know of definitely have degrees that um, help with brewing. I, I, for example, have a degree in, in public communication, believe it or not, from this interview. <laughs> Uh, a lot of guys get a degree in, you know, biochemistry or chemistry. And by and large, you know, people start off home brewing, just get a real passion for it, learn the craft that way, and then it's just a just a step to take it from doing it in your kitchen to learning how to do it on professional equipment. Isn't, you know, too big of a reach. At least you understand the basics, and then it's just understanding, you know, pumps and and flow and how things work and sanitization you know it gets more technical for sure but i mean the real key is to to start brewing on your own that's what i always tell people especially. is there like a kit or something that you recommend or is it kind of just go into like the beer nut or something and say hey i want to get yeah, started I think absolutely and... go to the beer nut talk to those guys they're great um a lot of people start off doing extract brewing i did which is um kind of cutting out the majority of what actual brewing is though to be honest um so as soon as you can if you have to start off doing extract brewing fine no problem at all but as soon as you can get into all grain brewing and start learning how to how to mash how to create the wort yourself rather than buying you know jugs of of somebody else's wort basically is what extract brewing is and and not trying to be a judgmental prick about that i i did extract brews for three or four years and everybody told me all the time you need to get into all grain bro you need to step it up and do all grain and i'm so glad i finally did you know it gives you the ultimate control over your beer once you're doing that you're really in a position to to step on with a with a real quote you know brewing company and understand the real concepts there but yeah that to me is the biggest thing you can have on your resume if you're trying to get on with a brewery is show that you care enough about beer to be at home making your own beer well th thank you very much seriously i mean anything in store for squatters that you care to share or is it just kind of hey you know what let let <laughs> surprise us i guess i mean i'm sure uh our, our next big exciting thing and you know speaking of the naming process we haven't come up with an official name for this beer yet but that scotch ale i talked about earlier um we're we kind of modeled mo uh, modeled it after a uh, a uh, beer from Trocare House, Jacobite Ale, which is a coriander spice scotch ale. Super excited about that beer. We're loving how it turned out. We just need a clever name, and I'll I'll try to keep everybody up to up to speed on you know what it is when it's officially named. So um, that should be coming out here by mid January, the latest. So. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate you coming down and sitting down and talking to me on the podcast and sharing your your story, your squatter story. Uh, usually I say, well, how can people find out about you? But, I mean, pretty much anybody in Utah can find a squatter's beer uh, just yeah. about anywhere. Come visit and us, uh, 147 he, West Broadway, as Peter Cole would say. Well, thank you very much, Jason. And, <laughs> no uh, yeah, we'll, we'll all enjoy some more squatters. Thank you. All right, now you know why I was so excited to bring you this episode of the podcast. 
Thank you so much, Jason, for taking a few minutes out of your day and sitting down with me, sharing your story, sharing a little bit behind the scenes of what happens down there at Squatter's Pub Brewery. Again, you can visit them at 147 West Broadway in beautiful downtown Salt Lake City. Grab a burger, grab some fries, grab a beer, and... Uh, Enjoy the afternoon with some friends or evening, whatever. Seriously, I'll put all the links at IamSaltLake.com, episode 27 under the show notes. That way you can uh, connect with them. I'm going to put their website and their address and everything that you can, uh, how you need to connect with them. Seriously, if uh, if you have any desire to do any home brewing, home brewing, check out the Beer Nut. They're at 1200 South State Street in Salt Lake City. They will hook you up. They will get you set up with all the brew gear that you need to get for home brewing. So tell them, uh, go in there and say, hey, you know what? The I Am Salt Lake podcast sent me in here. Seriously, the Beer Nut, 1200 South State Street. So anyways, uh, I Am Salt Lake podcast. You could check us out online, IamSaltLake.com. If you like the project that I'm doing, help keep the project going. IamSaltLake.com forward slash donate. Kick over a dollar or two. Your, uh, your dollar's help keep us going. What can I say? Thank you very much to those of you that have donated. And uh, yeah, also, if you want, you could check out audibletrial.com forward slash I am Salt Lake. You'll get a free audio book. They'll also kick over a few dollars to me, which help keep the podcast going and helps keep fun the project. So again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash I am Salt Lake. You get a free audio book. They got thousands and thousands and thousands of really cool audio books and uh, hey try them out cancel after a month if you don't like it it still helps the podcast out everybody wins and again our voicemail 385-202-5926 call us up with your thoughts on the podcast if you want to be a guest on the podcast anything you want to say chances are i'll even play it back here on the podcast on a future episode so Those of you that have been wondering, I will be around over the holidays, over Christmas, over New Year's right now. I got guests that are coming on the podcast, sharing their stories. If you want to be a guest on the podcast, I am saltlake at gmail.com or the voicemail 385-202-5926. I'm also, uh, excuse me, I'm already setting up the calendar for guests for January. If you want to wait until February, if you got any events going on over the summer, Drop me an email. Tell me what you got going on because I kind of want to get get you in get you in line. I want to bring you on. I want to showcase you. I want to I want to tell the people what is going on here in Salt Lake City. So get in touch if you just want to be a guest on the show. Tell me tell me what tell me some story ideas. I am Salt Lake at gmail.com. I'm ready to listen. Tell me what you got. I want to bring you on the show. Let's do this Salt Lake City. I am Salt Lake podcast. 2013, I got some great ideas for you. But again, I will be back on Sunday with a brand new episode showcasing somebody new. Somebody's doing some really rad stuff here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Thank you very much. Until next time, I am Chris Hollifield. I am saltlake.com. You guys have a good night.